Welcome to another installment of Tech Tips by Matt Rothman. We're here live in the Watkins IT studios here in Bethesda, Maryland. My guest here today is John Mahoney. Uh, John is one of the sales engineers here in our infrastructure group. John has been on the program before. John, I was hoping you could educate me, you could educate the audience on a SAN. I hear everyone talking about it, and I was just hoping that you give us a little insight, insight on exactly what a SAN is. Well, thank you, Matt, for having me back. Um, a SAN is essentially a, uh, a way to store data. Well, first off, what network. is a SAN? What does that stand for? Well, it stands for storage area network. And just think of it as a, a, a very high end way to store information within your network. Uh, before we really get into a SAN, though, let's discuss some of the other technologies so to kind of give your viewers a little bit of information about storage in general. Storage basically comes in three flavors you have direct attached storage, or you'll hear the acronym DAS. Um, which are disks that are physically installed inside a, a, inside a server chassis. So your traditional um, small business server at a, at a client site would have a couple of hard disks in it, and their data is stored in that environment. Okay, and that's a DAS. And that's a DAS. Then we have what's called a NAS, or Network Attached Storage, and that's just what the name implies. It's storage that's attached to your network and rides on the same Ethernet cables that all your other data transmission happens on. So you can have you know, a two terabyte NAS, a three terabyte NAS, etc. And what that does is it allows your servers to remotely address the storage that is somewhere else on the network. And it gives you some nice functionality. One of the downsides, however, of network attached storage is that the server requests for that information ride on the same transmission pipeline, if you will, as all of your other network traffic. So it's competing for space over your uh, local area network switching infrastructure. A SAN, in, uh, by contrast, builds its own network pathways or its own network infrastructure for the servers to retrieve that data, making it much more scalable and much more efficient because it's not competing with the general email traffic and those types of things. So. SAN architecture is really, uh, really comes into play when you have high volumes of data storage which require high interaction with the data. So if you have databases, for example, mm -hmm. a database, SQL, Oracle, those types of database platforms, a SAN architecture is a very good mechanism to store and protect that data and then to be able to back it up offline. And there's a whole bunch of other things that you can do with the SAN environment and that topology because it's not riding on that general uh, infrastructure pipelines that you have to your uh, general sure. clients. Now, what is like the, the break point where someone, an IT director, or a data center manager would go with a SAN versus a NAS? Well, it's gonna, there's a couple of different factors that are going to come Obviously, into Obviously, cost. Cost is, cost is a big one. Um, SANs traditionally in the past have been very, very expensive. Um, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the players in the SAN markets uh, EMC, uh, NetApp, um, etc. They have uh, really started targeting the small to medium business market space, so that the uh, the cost points of those have come down quite dramatically. Um, but in general, the uh, the recommendation is when you're going to have need to warehouse large volumes of data and still be able to retrieve and access that information is when you're going to start wanting to look at a SAN. Um, one of the things that is SANs are being used for in a very high volume environment nowadays in the small to medium business and even in the larger enterprise spaces within virtualization because of that secondary pathway for that data communication the uh, the I.O. or the input output request from the servers don't necessarily compete with the other traffic. So as the market has gone towards virtualization instead of the, the hard physical servers everything's moving towards these virtual servers correct that's where the SAN can really show its value well the SAN really shows its value because it's uh, it, there's less components to manage and monitor that reduces your total cost of ownership okay. you don't have to have as many people managing those components short business background. owners would like to hear that absolutely so you even though sometimes the uh, the entry point is a little bit higher than some of your other storage mediums in the long run, it actually helps you save money and you get better performance out of it. And that's one of the things that drives people to SANS is because they're looking for performance. Um, you know, in a typical NAS environment, the best kind of connectivity you're going to get to a NAS is, say, a gigabit, 
where in a, a fabric or a, a fiber channel SAN, you're going to be able to get upwards of two gigs and, and greater throughput. One of the so other better things, speed, better through. speed, and one of the other things that uh, facilitates uh, SAN environments is since you can connect them via fiber connectors or, fa or uh, fiber fabric, mm -hmm. um, the distances at which you can expose that storage area network to an individual server uh, go up greatly. Uh, you know, two to three, four kilometers. When you're talking connectivity, it, you don't sure. necessarily have to be in the same server. And, room and everything's server. moving towards this f these fiber networks. And, and fiber networks are still uh, still very high end, but um, in general, that is a uh, there's a migration towards that uh, that uh, that pathway. And with the SAN, you can really take advantage and leverage these fiber. You take advantage and leverage these fiber, and again, it creates a secondary network pathway for all this data flow back and forth between the server and the storage and takes it off of your general infrastructure or your or your local area network. Okay. Well, Sean, thank you very much. I, I know I learned something. I hope the audience learned something there about a SAN. Uh, before I let you go, uh, NFL training camp has started. Football is here. Give it up the for that. The dark times are almost over. Oh, man, I'm excited. Tell the audience, what is your, what's your football team? What's your favorite football team? Uh, my favorite team is the New York Football Giants. Oh, no. And oh, I know no. you are a, uh, you're a Washington We're a Redskins. Yeah, I'm a Redskins yeah. fan. Yeah. And, and Tech Tips is a proud, is a proud Redskins fan. You know, fan base right here, so uh, we're not going to hold that against you. That's I know you're fine. from the New York area, exactly. so uh, we'll, we'll we'll give you a pass on this. I, one, uh, but, I appreciate the pass, but I'm excited. I'm sure you're excited for football season. Very excited for football season, and uh, you know, we open up on the 13th of against September the Reds against skins. the Redskins. All right, we might have to have a little side bet on that one there. But hey, John, thank you for coming on the program here. I thank appreciate again, that. Uh, once again, if any of you out there would like to be a guest on this program or you have any technology ideas you'd like me to feature, please feel free to contact me. This is Tech Tips with Matt Rothman.